Hello guys, it is Brittany here. Welcome back to my Color Guard YouTube channel. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you want to spin this lovely piece of equipment here, but you don't know how to do so yet, or you just want to get better. So if that's the case, keep on watching. So I'm going to introduce you here to your good friend Saber, teach you all the parts of the Saber so you know what they're all called, and also how to do drop spins on the right and left, and add in a teensy weensy little exercise at the end to help you get your drop spins consistent. So if you want that, keep on watching. So first things first when it comes to learning the parts for your saber, we'll start with the top. <laughs> so right here we have our hilt where our basket is this whole thing. Then the specific part of it right here is your handle. Then right here people usually just call this specific part the hilt or handle depending. Like I said, it all depends on who your instructors are. Um, I usually just call this the hilt, this the basket, and this the handle, for me specifically. Then, um, this whole big part right here is called the blade. Right here, we have the tip of our saber. On mine, you can't really see it, but there's a piece of tape right here called the catch tape. That's where you want to catch your saber, so we look nice and strong on our catches, not, you know, shrunken in. And then right here, we have a spotter tape, so that way when we toss it nice and high in the air, we don't lose it and we can see where it is and still catch it even in you know not really well lit places so now that we learned all that let's actually learn how to spin this darn thing so first thing you need to know about saber is the technique we use to do drop spins if you have never spun a weapon before i highly 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 do not recommend spinning saber first because saber is notorious for being one of the hardest pieces of equipment to master just because it has so many specific techniques just for this piece of equipment. So please, please, please try to spin a rifle first or some other piece of equipment similar to a saber so you can at least get a handle on how to spin these smaller pieces. Try not to transition straight from flag to saber. That being said, on saber we use what's called the pinch technique. I also call it the taco. Kind of looks like, you know, taco a little bit. So whenever we're spinning a saber, we do not spin it with our whole hand like we would with a rifle. Um, we use pretty much just the pads of our fingers or our fingertips to spin it because if I use our whole hand, it'll turn in our hand. We won't be able to get consistent or nice time spins with an entire ensemble. So just so you know, remember that. Whatever hand is on the blade side needs to be taco or just your fingertips. Okay. So let's learn first our right flat. So for right flat, your left hand will be just grabbing um, like this on the handle on the top. You want to be boxed out just like I talked about on our rifle video. My right hand will be pinching just about where the catch tape is. For catch tape reference, um, you basically want to have it on the end third of your saber. So if I split it into thirds, about a third here, about a third here, roughly. Okay? So I'm here. I want to have it nice waist level so that way it's down from my body so that way I look nice and long you never want to crunch yourself up when you're performing um, or doing any kind of color guard activity um, so now that we've learned the parts of our saber um, let's learn how to actually do the spins so to hold our saber right flat we're going to start by putting my left hand on top of the basket um, holding the handle part of the basket and then we're going to have my right hand um, in my little pinch or taco form as I say on our catch tape. Your catch tape is about a third of the way down your saber roughly. Um, usually what I do is I just catch something and kind of mark it with my hand and tape there. So it's not an exact science but just for reference. So we're here. Remember like I said we want to pinch our saber or use our taco hold. You never want to grab your entire saber with your fist. It will turn in your hand make your spin super inconsistent, impossible to catch, and impossible to keep in time with the entire ensemble. And that's the exact opposite of what we want. So we're here. Remember, we want it nice and long down at our waist. We look taller, we look nice and strong. Box out arms, just like I talked about in our rifle video. Pushing with our left hand for our right side. It'll stay glued to my left thigh until my spins are done or I do my official stop. And I will release still at this upper 45 degree angle just like I do on everything else um, so from here like I said in slow motion it'll kind of look like this it'll come out of my hand and I'll catch just a little bit lower 
your spin sphere saber will start far out. It'll get a little bit closer to your um, spotter tape as you go on. Rifle differentiates in that way. We want to stay in that same spot. Saber, it'll come a little bit closer because it's kind of impossible to spin from this far out. <laughs> Here, remember nice and long. We push, we'll release at that angle. So five, six, seven, eight, and one. Notice I'm a lot, lot closer to my spotter tape now than I am here. When you're here, this will be roughly about where all of your drop spins will be. Your first one might be a little bit higher, but most of your drop spins will be at your spotter tape. Okay? So let's just do five spins without a stop because we don't know how to do that yet. And then we'll continue on and learn the stop. So five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, and a five. Notice every time I do a drop spin, my tip is up and my basket is down to the right side. So keep that as a handy dandy little tip to see if you're doing your drop spins right. If you do one or just stop anywhere in the middle of your spins, your tip should always be straight up to the sky. Now let's learn how to do that stop. So we're here. We're going to do the same thing we've done before. Go to this upper angle, up a 45 degree angle. My saber will rotate. Do, 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 do. Fake slow motion. My left hand will grab it underneath on the basket here. My right hand will grab over the saber, roughly about where your catch tape is. And we want it at our waist level, just like everything else. Okay. So now I'm going to just show you 10 spins with a stop just so you can use it for future reference and see if you're doing your spins correctly. And five and six and five, six, squeeze, push, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and a one. Notice I stopped left hand underneath, right hand over, at my waist, perfect, that's just what we want. If you did it and you can only get through a few spins right now, that is A-OK. -okay. Main thing to remember, use that pinch technique. Now let's move on to the left side. So the last place we left off was this flat after we just finished our right drop spins. But saber is a little weird and we can't just go from one side to the next like we did on rifle. So we gotta switch the whole thing over. Kind of copy paste and reverse it. So your left hand is going to be um, palm up to the sky, pinching, pinching, pinching always on your catch tape, but now it's on your left side. Your right hand will do the same thing like we did on the left. It'll be grabbing the handle of your basket. Then we're gonna do the whole thing we did on the right side. Remember, always at your waist, arms always boxed out. Remember, we're gonna push on eight and, not on eight, not on one, right in between. So we're going to push. I wanna make sure we hit this angle. My right hand will stay glued to my right thigh now that I'm on the left side. I will release and catch just a little bit above my spotter tape and continue to get a little bit lower so my spins are just about here. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we're here, we'll do a few spins. We stop just about there. Yeah, so just a little bit above your spotter tape. Sometimes you'll get right up on it. But for the left side, the exact same thing. Use your pinch technique, you push. Um, make sure you release at your upper 45 degree angle on your left side and pretty much the same show you how to do some spins on the left side and how to incorporate a stop on the left. So now we're here, let's just do some spins, we did some fabulous spins. Now how the frick do I stop? Well I'll teach you. So this is some fake slow motion again. We're here, it's gonna come up, it's gonna come around. My right hand will catch underneath, just like kind of similar to the opposite, opposite side, but like I said, copy paste and reversed. Then this side, my left hand will be over on my catch tape, catching at my waist, um, nice and flat, okay? Obviously notice you can't start your right drop spins from here, so we'll have to reverse it in a different way that I'll show you in just a little bit, okay? So now we've gone over right and left and how to stop. We gotta kinda talk about how to do an exercise with this. So let's go. So an exercise that I was taught on Saber is how to transition from the right and the left smoothly. Some places your instructor will just have you stop, will kind of reset and go on the left. That's how most places function. So if this is unnecessary for you to learn, that's fine. You can click off now. But for those of us that want to just use this as a practice tool to just continually do a bunch of right, do a bunch of left and switch back, this is an excellent way to do it. So we're gonna do some spins. 
da, 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 da. let's imagine like I just did 10 or so, I will stop. I'm going to bring it up. Notice my handle is facing the left side of my body. I'm going to do kind of like a typical flag drop spin, so drop it, both of my thumbs are down. I'm going to grab it at an angle like this, using my pinch technique, pull it down with my right hand, and notice I'm on the left now. It's pretty fun. And I'll do the same thing for the left. I will stop on the left. I'll bring it up now to my right side, drop spin it out, pinch it with my pinch grip down here, pull, and be able to do spins on the right. And I can continually do this for as long as I want or for however much my instructor wanted for. Okay, so now that we've kind of learned how to do the motion of it, let's learn it with counts and that'll be all for today. Five and six and five, six, squeeze, push. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, and one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, Four and one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and a stop. All right, guys. So that'll do it for today. Remember, any questions, comments, concerns you have can go in the comments down below. I always read them so I can give you guys a little extra help. Um, main thing, like I said, on rifle, um, with any kind of new skill that you learn, just in color guard in general, the golden rule is to never be too hard on yourself. Two other things I say specifically about Color Guard is consistency is key. Whenever you're learning this new skill, um, it's really hard to initially get the skill, but once you get it, it's really important that you practice to keep it consistent because you want to practice it until you never get it wrong, not practice it until you get it right. So getting it right means, you know, I got it once, I'm all good. You want to do it until you can do it over and over again perfectly so that way um, you guys can audition and make it for all those weapon lines out there. Okay, um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!